Are you interested in learning more about a proper cruising yacht with four staterooms designed for the owner operator that cruises in the mid thirties and can do 45 knots top speed? I'm Captain Greg for Boat Test, and I'm delighted to be on the Valder Yachts The Keys model. It's a foiling catamaran, and I can't wait to show it to you. Wayne Valder, the founder of Valder Yachts, is a successful businessman from New Zealand. He is also a champion offshore power catamaran racer. His dream is to build high-speed, luxurious cruising catamarans that can cruise large distances quickly and in comfort. With Valder Yachts The Keys' ability to go 40 knots, one can go from Wall Street to Nantucket in just under five hours, or cross the Bahama Bank while traveling from Miami to Nassau in just under four hours. There's simply no way to cover that much distance quickly and in comfort in a conventional power catamaran. These fiberglass non-foiling boats are intended to go no faster than 20 knots or so, and in the 65 to 70 foot range, typically weigh in at between 100 and 120,000 pounds. To accomplish Valder's goals of speed, luxury, and significant range, three critical design pillars are clear. One, the yachts have to be catamarans. Two, construction must be 100% of carbon fiber. And three, the yachts must have foils. Think of the foil like an airplane wing, except in water. On the keys, it's located about midship and is in the shape of a V pointing forward. As the yacht increases in speed, the foil begins to work, lifting the bow of the boat out of the water. This provides between 15 and 20% increased efficiency over a planing hull. There's nothing new about foiling boats. The first foiling boat was designed and built in the 1860s. Alexander Graham Bell built several foiling boats, including the infamous HD4 Hydrodome that broke the 70 mile per hour barrier in 1919. Much of the recent foil development has been driven by the America's Cup, which have been sailed in foiling boats since 2013. First in catamarans, but more recently in foiling monohulls, these boats are capable of breaking the 50 knot barrier. But these sailboats are featherweights compared to conventional catamarans. So, for Wayne Valder to have it all on a 66-foot yacht, speed, four-cabin luxury, and prodigious range, his yacht had to be light, and that meant the keys had to be built 100% from carbon fiber. That would make it 30 to 40% lighter than the same design made of fiberglass. Carbon fiber is as much as 50% stronger than fiberglass, and in most applications, stronger than steel. Carbon fiber is also eight to 10 times stiffer than fiberglass and has far greater fatigue resistance, which means that weight can be saved on supporting structures such as stringers. The bad news is that carbon fiber is significantly more expensive than fiberglass. As light as carbon fiber is, the Valor we tested was estimated to weigh in at 76,500 pounds. To propel the yacht to speeds where the foil can reach maximum efficiency, Fowler installed twin man 1300 horsepower V8 engines, which have an excellent power to weight ratio. Here we see a video of one of the boat's first test runs in Fowler's native New Zealand. For a cat to go fast, it needs to be on foils. Between the hulls is a V-shaped carbon fiber foil, which starts lifting at about 17.5 knots. The Humphrey interceptors on the hulls automatically trim the boat so it's under control at all times. As you can see, the keys does not rise completely clear of the water, but look closely and you can see that how far and how far back the hulls are out of the water. This allows her to shed enough drag to go twice as fast as a conventional catamaran her size. Let's look at the test numbers we got when testing her from Fort Lauderdale to Miami and in northern Biscayne Bay. Valder Yachts The Keys is 67 feet, 7 inches length overall, 22 feet on the beam with a draft of 2 feet 9 inches. Valder Yachts The Keys is powered by two man V8s, each with 1,300 horsepower. At 2,000 RPM, the low end of cruise, she did 28.5 knots and was burning 126 gallons per hour, which yields a range of 564.2 nautical miles. At wide open throttle, on average 2,373 RPM, 
She did 40.7 knots and was burning 138.6 gallons per hour, which yields a range of 733.2 nautical miles. One might note that range actually goes up at higher RPM. This is a unique characteristic of a foiling boat where the increased speed increases efficiency of the foil and thus range. There is no helm wheel, which seems odd at first. Once above idle speeds, control is shifted from the Aventix Merrick's 3D controller to steering controlled by a rudder angled joystick. The joystick is a non-follow-up steering control that moves the rudder angle to port or starboard based on how long the joystick is held. Pushing the lever to port angles the back of the rudders to port and thus turns the yacht to port. Once the joystick is released, it pops back to center, but the rudder does not. So to set a new course, the stick needs to be moved to starboard to straighten the yacht out. Given the non-follow-up aspect of the joystick, knowing rudder angle is a critical element in handling the yacht. Rudder angle is displayed constantly on two different points at the helm station. Most operators will use the autopilot functionality of the Garmin system extensively when operating at speed, something that most captains do anyway when making prolonged offshore runs. I like the futuristic look of the helm station with these floating MFDs. There are three Garmin 8416s which are fully configurable to any view that you want. Rudder angle, especially at speed, is a very important thing to keep track of on this boat. So we actually have three displays, including a main Mitsubishi display in the middle for all the rudder angle information. There's the Humphrey interceptor system with the controller, and lastly, the main throttle controller. With the Aventix controller, operating the yacht is so easy. To corkscrew the yacht, either to port or starboard, simply twist the top of the controller. It's a proportional controller, so if you push the joystick forward just a little bit, the yacht will go slow, bump it forward even further, and the yacht goes faster. Now, you can operate with the normal throttles and just the thruster if you so desired, but it's so easy to use this control. One thing of note, the distance between the props is much greater than any monohull. Therefore, the amount of yaw or turning that you can get on the boat is dramatic. But like with anything in docking, go slow with small inputs, you'll get used to it in no time. Now I've switched from joystick mode to command mode. In this mode, a bump of the throttle into forward or reverse creates a significant amount more thrust. The controller also has a trolling mode, which can be used when you want to go slower. With the trolling mode engaged, we're doing just over two knots in a slight incoming tide. With the trolling function off, the boat idles at just about seven knots. The Keys has a tender garage. To access the top deck, there's a two-part ladder. The lower part easily clicks into place next to the refrigeration units. Pull a pin on the upper part of the ladder. The bottom flips down, locks into place, and a pin locks it. Now we're ready to go to the top deck. Here we are on the top deck of the Keys. Now you'll notice the big H. It is designed to be able to have touch and goes from a mid-sized helicopter. You could also strap a helicopter down here as well, but you probably don't want to have her here when you're doing 30 or 40 knots. This space can also be reconfigured to hold a larger tender or perhaps a series of jet skis. Now let's look at another aspect of this yacht. I'm here in the battery compartment in the middle of the saloon. What's housed in here are five master volt lithium ion batteries. Each one of them is 24 volts and has 200 amp hours. The way this works is the electrical power that comes in from the shore goes into a series of master volt chargers that powers these lithium batteries to give them a full charge. Everything on the boat, with the exception of two things, the saloon air conditioning and the water maker, are powered by these lithium batteries. Future models will have everything on the boat powered by these lithium batteries, making it a much more environmentally efficient solution than having to run a generator. Access to both engine rooms is through a hatch on the aft cockpit, supported by two gas struts. Being a catamaran, there are two engine rooms. There's full height headroom in here. And the most important thing after the V8 man diesel is the easy to reach raw water intake through hole, which is right here in the walkway. 
I particularly like the glass plate on top of the C strainer with five wing nuts. Forward is the ZFE drive. Note the stuffing box is easy to reach. The port engine room is a mirror of the starboard engine room with just a couple of differences. Up front, there's two Fisher Panda 15 kilowatt generators. The combination of the foiling technology and the carbon fiber construction allow this boat to do the things that it does. The exciting thing about the high-speed Valder Cruising Cat is that she is the largest foiling cruising catamaran in the world. She, along with a couple of much smaller cats, are starting a whole new class of yacht, the Foiling Cruising Power Catamaran. In addition to her performance, because she is a semi-custom boat, new owners can configure most anything they want within this remarkable hull. For Boat Test, I'm Captain Greg, reminding you life is better on a boat.